I like to think of the New York sour as the classier cousin of the whiskey sour. This drink goes back to the 19th century and is often just defined as a whiskey sour with a float of red wine. But there's a bit more to it than that. How do you incorporate that red wine? Do you use egg white? Is it still technically a New York sour if you add egg white? We'll cover all that in this video and I'll show you three recipes including a pretty wild presentation at the end. All right, let's jump right in with a basic New York sour. Grab a shaker and add 3 fourths of an ounce or 22 mils of fresh lemon juice. And for these recipes, you'll need some simple syrup, just equal parts sugar and water. We're gonna do another 3 fourths of an ounce or 22 mils. And for our whiskey, this laid back mellow corn may not sound like a New Yorker, but it is very reasonably priced and pretty smooth. So we'll do two ounces or 60 mils. Then we're gonna add about four cubes of ice and shake this for 15 seconds or so to chill and dilute it. And this drink actually goes back to the 1880s when it was called the Continental Sour or the Southern Whiskey Sour. And then by the early 1900s, it became the New York Sour, probably because some New York bartender made it really popular and changed the name. All right, I'm just gonna double strain this into a chilled rocks glass. You could put a couple ice cubes in there if you want, but I'm just gonna do it straight. And now we need our red wine. Try to go for a dry red wine here, like a Malbec, Syrah, or Cab Franc. And we're just gonna take a spoon and float this over the back. Here I'm using one ounce or 30 mils. Do this slowly, because you're trying to get a nice contrast between the red wine float on top and the whiskey sour on the bottom. And due to the specific gravity of the red wine, it should rise to the top. All right, here we go. Our basic New York sour. Let's see how it is. Cheers. I'm always blown away by how well this combination of red wine and whiskey sour works. The wine really mellows out the drink, but you still get some of that complexity on the back. I love it. But let's level this up for the pro version. We're gonna start by upgrading our whiskey to a nicer bourbon. Here I'm using Basil Hayden. Again, we're gonna build this in a shaker and start with 3 fourths of an ounce or 22 mils of fresh lemon juice, 3 fourths of an ounce or 22 mils of simple syrup, two ounces or 60 mils of bourbon, and after that last cocktail shake, I'm gonna need a protein shake. So we're gonna add some egg white into this one. So we're gonna add the egg white of one large egg and do it over the other tin in case you mess it up. Now we're gonna use a technique called the dry shake, which means we're gonna shake it first without ice to emulsify that egg white. And confusingly, ice is the only dry thing you'll add into the shaker, but it adds dilution so it becomes wet, whatever. This is gonna get us a nice tight foam, and I've started using this method instead of the reverse dry shake where you would shake with ice first. If you're a bit confused, I get it, but basically we shook with no ice, and now we're going to add in the ice to chill and dilute it. This two-step process is gonna allow us to get a nice frothy foam without over diluting the cocktail, hence why you break it up into two parts. So shake that for about 15 seconds, and then we're going to double strain it into a chilled coupe glass. Now the egg white foam might take a little longer, so you can kind of roll it around in the fine mesh strainer to get it all out. All right, and now to layer the red wine on top. Instead of using the back of the spoon, I'm gonna use this fancy professional layering device, but it is not necessary. This helps slow down the pouring process to get a nice even layer on top. It just sort of rolls down that wire over that floating ball, and you can see it start to build up on top there. Just like last time, we're doing one ounce or 30 mils of a dry red wine. And that's what we're going for. Three beautiful layers of whiskey sour, red wine, and egg white. Let's give this a taste, the pro version of the New York Sour. This is excellent and definitely a step up. The egg white adds another layer of smoothness that you don't get with the first version. And some would technically call this a Greenwich Sour because it has egg white, but to me, this is a classic New York Sour. I highly recommend this version, but if you don't want to use egg white, you could also swap it for chickpea brine. Okay, our last one is wild. We're gonna combine a couple advanced techniques to create something that is both visually amazing and delicious. And if you're curious about how to make this, then you're probably the type of creative person that would love using Skillshare. And I'm thrilled to be partnered with them on this video. Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of inspiring classes. And I've been meaning to work on my lighting for the show and really didn't know where to start. And so I spent this weekend watching this introduction to lighting workshop, which taught me how to think about the interaction of highlights and shadows and the different types of lighting on set. Times like these are a unique opportunity to learn new skills and connect with fellow creatives. And Skillshare is a great place to keep you learning. And right now, the first 1,000 people to click the link in the description will get a free trial of the Skillshare Premium Membership. 
and after that, it's only around $10 a month. All right, let's get back to it. We're gonna use a clarified milk punch technique to make a clarified whiskey sour. So we're gonna start by adding three ounces or 90 mils of strained lemon juice into a container. Then we're gonna balance that out with some sweetness, another three ounces or 90 mils of simple syrup. And then for our booze, we're gonna do eight ounces or about 240 mils of our bourbon. So our total quantity here is about 14 ounces or 420 mils. And if you've seen my clarified milk punches, you know we now need to incorporate some milk. And if you haven't seen this, stay with me. We're gonna do a four to one ratio of cocktail to milk, so that's three and a half ounces or about 105 mils. At this point, we're going to slowly pour the cocktail into the cold milk. And the citrus in this cocktail is going to coagulate the casein proteins in that milk. This is going to both trap the cloudiness-inducing particles and strip out some of the astringent polyphenols that we find in whiskey. The result is gonna be a beautiful clear cocktail and a rich mouthfeel. But first, to get that clarification, we need to actually now filter out these curdles. I found the easiest way to do this is just to run it through a coffee filter. You have to pour it very slowly. The curds that build up at the bottom of the filter are going to act as another filter that will really help get this clear. And so it's gonna actually take a while. The first bits of the cocktail will come through relatively quickly, but then after that, the process takes up to three hours. So just set it and forget it, but I promise it's worth it. All right, we're gonna combine that with my hollow ice ball trick here. We're gonna take a standard ice ball mold and fill it to the top with filtered water. We're gonna put that in the freezer for about an hour and a half flip it upside down, and then let it freeze for another hour and a half. That's gonna give you a hard ice shell with water left on the inside, and so now we just need to drain that out. So I recommend just heating up a syringe like this and extracting out the water. Now you've got this hollow ice shell, and you can put this back in the freezer until you're ready to use it, either in a Tupperware or back in that ice ball mold. Meanwhile, your clarified milk punch should be coming along nicely. In the end, it'll yield about 12 ounces or 360 mils, which will be about three servings. Now before we serve this, we need to add some dilution and chill it down as much as possible. So we're gonna take four ounces or 120 mils, put it into a mixing glass with ice and stir it for about 45 seconds. If you shake it instead of stirring it, you're gonna get a lot of frothiness from the proteins in the milk punch, which is actually a nice mouthfeel, but is not what we're going for with the presentation. All right, now cold is the name of the game here, so grab a chilled double rocks glass and some of the wine you've kept really cold in a freezer. We're going to carefully add our ice ball into the glass and carefully fill it up with our wine. If the wine is too warm, it'll melt the shell and ruin the presentation. I'm using a tiny little funnel that came with my atomizer, but if you have a steady hand, you can pour this directly in. I went extra slow to not spill a drop, so let's speed this up a bit. In the end, this is gonna be a bit heavier on the wine, about two ounces or 60 mils. And now all that's left to do is pour our clarified whiskey sour around our red wine ice ball. Pour that all the way to the top, and because that ice is perfectly clear, it just looks like there is an orb of red wine floating inside of your whiskey sour. Awesome. Once you serve that drink, give it a little stir to release some of the wine. And what I love about this drink is that as the ice melts, more wine will be released over time, which changes the character of the drink. But let's see if it's any good. Our chemist, New York Sour, with a clarified milk punch. Man, that visual is awesome. And you actually still get a bit of that separation as the wine will float to the top. But how does it taste? Well, here's my face contemplating the words to describe it. It is incredibly smooth, well-balanced. Clarifying the whiskey sour takes a ton of the edge off and makes it pair really well with the red wine. Whether you put it in an ice ball or not, I highly recommend you guys try this out. Thanks for watching, y'all. If you wanna see more cocktails, three ways where I make a basic pro and chemist version, I've got a bunch more, including the Manhattan, Pina Colada, Mojito, and more. And if you have the means and want to support the channel, check out my Patreon where I've got some exclusive content and early access. Cheers.